Well, it's October. It's my favorite month. It's my favorite season. All the pretty colors start to kick in down here in Southern Utah and the weather starts to get really nice. And I'm back at it again with some fall photography. Fall colors a little earlier this year, uh, which is good. It's good timing. Uh, the maples look like they're in full, full color right now, which is really good. So with uh, a little bit of luck and some scouting, I'm hoping to find some really good compositions here. This year I brought with me uh, three new lenses to try out. That'll be a interesting spin, uh, trying to frame up some familiar stuff and you know, try with a little bit different focal length to be kind of nice. So stick around if you want to see how those lenses turn out for me and uh, see what I come away with this year. So I got myself set up now on this composition here. It's got this really nice patterned sandstone rock in the, in a, in the back, as a background actually of this composition. Uh, and all the lines are what really attracted to me on top of the fact that all the trees that are above this composition right now are being hit by direct light, which is bouncing reflected light down into this scene. Uh, and that's what made me stop to look because everything was glowing and it looked really beautiful. Uh, so there's a bunch of maple leaves here. Unfortunately, the leaves that I was working with here, one was kind of jagged looking, didn't really look very good. And I had a really nice background. Um, so I did go ahead and place this leaf. This is a little contrived, but I'm shooting it anyway because I think it's a nice scene. Um, so I've placed this leaf here nicely so that I've got a diagonal kind of flow to my photograph here. Uh, but then the leaf is the main subject in the, in the center of the photograph. Of course, I'm shooting with my uh, Shamini 4x5 here. Uh, I'm using my Nikkor W 210 millimeter at 5.6 lens. And because I'm shooting directly at the ground, that's meaning I'm having to extend my bellows quite a bit in order to get this in focus, along with a bunch of different uh, camera movements here in order to match my plane of focus with the rock. Uh, which gave me a little bit of trouble here because the rock does slope a little bit towards the back end. And of course my camera positioning was critical because I was trying to line up uh, my composition to match these diagonal lines. So I was kind of pinned in on where I could put the camera. So I just had to deal with it the best I could with my cam my front and rear movements actually to be able to match the plane of this rock and then just try to capture the rest of it as much as I can with depth of field. So the bellows extension on this ended up being an additional two thirds. Uh, I'm shooting Velvia 50 on this. So adding for bellows extension and a little bit of reciprocity failure that took my uh, total exposure time to eight seconds, F32. And that's probably all I'm gonna shoot, is just one sheet on it, because it is one that I composed. It was a nice shot, but I'm not gonna sit here and shoot sheet after sheet after sheet off of it, because it was kind of just in passing anyway. So I'm just gonna stick with the one sheet. Hopefully that doesn't get destroyed in, sh in processing. But uh, yeah, now I think it's time to pack the camera up, head on down to wash, and continue seeing what else we can get. It's nice and colorful down here, and the weather's good, so hopefully uh, hope you'll be able to get some good stuff. The lens I used for this image was the first of the three new lenses I picked up this year, the Nikon 210mm Nikkor f5.6. It did a stellar job of sharpness, and I like the framing in this image with the sandstone stripes on the diagonal. The crack on the top right corner of the image is another interesting detail, and I think it fits in well, being on the same diagonal slant as the sandstone stripes.
Well, this morning is another really bright blue sky day. It's beautiful. Uh, forecast is a little bit warm this afternoon, but this morning it's really nice and cool. And nice working conditions down here. And my first composition of the morning is this rock, this big sandstone boulder that's in the wash here. And on the edge of it, there's this swirl pattern tunneled into the side of it. it looks really cool. But then above it is a bunch of maple trees you can see behind me here. They're all dropping their leaves down into the wash. You can probably see the leaf litter here. Some of it's fallen into this cavity, this rock, which was really attractive to me in addition to the sandstone shape and the features. There's a little bit of white rock in the foreground here as well. It's kind of had to pick a spot to chop that off uh, because my focal length is a little bit longer. It's a little tight. Uh, I could have stand to probably been a little bit wider or further back from this, but my tripod's already so tall of the ground glass is kind of hard to work on. Uh, so I just had to make do with what I got. But I'm shooting with my 210 millimeter Nikkor W lens, f5.6. And I made sure to frame these features on the right hand side. It's got kind of this sharp little hook shape to it. I thought it was really important. But on the left hand side, there's a ridge line too that comes across it. I didn't want to cut out a frame like this. I wanted to make sure it was in frame. Huge challenge with this one uh, is depth of field. I seem to like to do that to myself a lot. But there's depth in the scene, you know, the depth of the rock, the where it's cut. Uh, but then I've also got this red leaf that's up on the very top left of the composition. That was a cool detail I wanted to keep. I didn't place this one this time. This stuff was actually there when I when I uh, found it. So I wanted to work with it because I think it's a cool detail. Uh, but that means I'm trying to focus up here and I'm trying to focus down here. So it's a real challenge. In addition to that, there's a little bit of a slope to it. So I've applied a series of different camera movements to try to compensate for that. A little bit of front swing, some front tilt, also some rear asymmetrical rear tilt to try to match my plane of focus as best as I could across the bottom of this. The main focal point of this is the center of the composition with the leaves down in the bottom of this hole. So that's where I focused to get critical sharpness and then the rest of it will probably fall a little bit soft, but that's okay. That being said, I stopped down to f45 on my lens uh, to give me maximum depth of field, which is one stop from the maximum. Now, is this image going to suffer from slight amounts of diffraction? Probably. But scenes like this in particular are all about making compromises and what's in, what's most important to you. To me, trying to get as much depth of field was, was more important than worrying about diffraction. With a small aperture like that, and then just a little bit of bellows extension, it's about one third additional exposure for the bellows. Uh, and then I've also got my Lee landscape polarizer on the front which has got a slight warming effect to it. Uh, and the reason for that is because I'm trying to polarize out some of the reflected light from the sky so it doesn't go quite so blue. So the warming effect will help with that and then just a little bit of polarization too to try to knock out the reflection from the sky on these white rocks. Uh, and there was a couple of different ways to try to figure out, you know, the filter factor for each filter. You can go by what the manufacturer's recommendations. Uh, or what I did was I just metered right through the, the filter. So I just stuck my gray card in the scene, metered off of that and then meter through the filter to see what the actual exposure difference was. And that ended up being right on the edge of a stop to a stop and a third. So I went the additional stop and a third. I'm shooting Fuji Velia 50 on this scene and all that stuff combined set my exposure time to a minute and one second. So pretty long, but it's nice and calm and still in the wash here. And I'm shooting a target that's not moving. So it should be just fine. Now I'm sitting here just kind of debating whether or not uh, I want to shoot a double on this one, probably. Uh, and then it's probably about time to pack the camera up. It's a beautiful section of wash here, so it's a little more to explore. And with any luck, I'll be set up on another composition here shortly. I did shoot a double of this scene off camera. And as an experiment, I removed the Lee Landscape polarizer off the front of the lens. That exposure is the one on the left. And there's definitely a noticeable difference without it, as there's more magenta and a bluish tone in the rocks. I do prefer the warmer palette of the image on the right, particularly in the coloring of the leaves. The leaf on the top left corner turned out reasonably sharp, and I was really happy with the exposure on both of these, since there's enough detail in the bright white rocks, and the shadows are sitting at just about the right spot as well. So I'm at my evening location now, which is a spot that's got this sandstone feature swooping up here in the foreground. And then this really colorful, beautiful maple tree here. It's actually a couple trees there, I guess. 
The background in this is just this sandstone face here. Uh, there's a few little smaller evergreen trees that are standing up here. So I did my best to try to frame this so that those trees were standing pretty straight, uh, which means I had to keep my camera pretty level. Uh, and, but in order to get all the stuff in the foreground that I wanted, but not the sky, which you can see a little bit creeping here in the video, uh, I had to actually use some front fall, rise and fall. I just brought it down uh, so that I could keep my camera level so that I'm not getting little evergreen trees that are converging or diverging. So it was quite a challenge to set up actually. Not 100% sure that I got it framed, you know, the best. It's pretty likely that there's going to be just a little bit of this guy poking up in the corner of the, of the film sheet. But it was kind of just trying to make the best I could, compromise where I could to get, you know, the best balance of everything. So I framed this one with my Nikkor 90mm f4.5 uh, lens. You can see the camera set up here shooting the vertical composition. Uh, and that's because I really wanted a lot of foreground in order to make use of all this sandstone here that I'm blocking right now. The foreground is as much of a feature in this, I think, as the red tree is. That's kind of my thoughts. But that was also why I was having such trouble with the sky poking in because I was shooting pretty wide. But the maple is a little bit past prime here, so it's been dropping leaves down. There's a bit of leaf litter down here in the wash, which I think is really helping too. Because wash, you know, is just kind of sand and rocks and stuff. And, but having a little bit of you know, sprinkling of leaves down there helps it out a little bit, I think. I'm shooting Velvia 50 on this. Uh, when I first got here, this whole cliff face up here above me was lit up. Uh, it was sending reflected light down into the wash down here. The trouble was, though, it was lighting the very top of my trees here, too, which I was planning on including in the composition. So I kind of had to wait till that was further up. So it's possible this may be a little cooler than I had originally imagined. So I took a shot with uh, my 81B warming filter. I also took a shot without it so I can compare them side by side, which one I like, see which one I like better. But my exposures were five seconds F32 and six seconds F32, the additional second to compensate for the 81B warming filter. That's probably gonna be it for the evening because the light's starting to fade out of the canyon here pretty fast. It won't be long before it gets pretty dark here, so. But here's a look at those film sheets and let me know what you think down in the comments below. This first sheet was a one shot with the 81B warming filter and the second one without. Of course, I prefer the slightly warmer color palette, and I wouldn't have complained if it was even warmer. Of course, the thing that jumps out right away on both of these is that I somehow managed to capture the bed of the camera, which is annoyingly a mistake I've made more than once this year. I suspect part of the reason why I didn't notice this in a field is because the preview aperture I was framing with at f4.5 would have resulted in it just looking like a dark vignette at the top of the ground glass. But the film was exposed using a much smaller taking aperture, which results in greater depth of field and rendered this as a much stronger edge. Now maybe if I had checked my framing all the way down at the taking aperture before exposing, I might have noticed this. But that would have resulted in a much darker ground glass, so it's also possible that I wouldn't have seen it anyway. Regardless, the lesson here is I need to be careful when I'm shooting vertical frames with a wide angle lens, and watch out to make sure that I'm not including the bed of the camera. Otherwise, both top corners suffer from a little bit of sky poking in, which is something I knew in the field was a possibility. Fortunately, all of these issues can be resolved with just a slight crop, since I frame this wide enough that I have enough room to do so. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you can let me know by hitting the thumbs up button down below. And while you're down there, consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. Take care, and I'll catch you in the next video. I don't know what I want to say. All the camera time and nothing to say. Hi. But here's those film sheets. Uh, let's take a look at them on a white table. Jeez, right in my eyeball.